What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this DIY base cabinet. It is awesome storage for the garage or workshop. It has drawers as well as doors that have pull-out trays in them. You can configure it however you want it, as many drawers as you'd like. I'll show you exactly how I did it. Stay tuned. I started off the project by breaking down two plywood sheets into smaller sizes for easier handling. I just got the AccuCut track from Craig Tool, the sponsor of today's video, and it's an awesome pairing with my cordless circular saw. The non-slip track lets me just put it down on the plywood, make my cut, and move on quickly. No cords, no clamping, no problem. I took the sheets to my table saw and I followed my cut list to cut the sides to size and rough out most of the other pieces. I cut the parts to a known width and I'll size them later to length to fit the build as I make it. I have plans available for this build that include a full cut list to help you minimize waste during cutting and layout. You can check the link in the description for more details. The sides are connected with horizontal supports on the top and the bottom. To get all the pieces the same length, I clamp them together and I gang cut them over on the miter saw. The toe kick plate is an inch and a half longer than the supports and I cut it to size as well. Speaking of the toe kick, I cut notches on the bottom of each side to accept the kick plate. I used a jigsaw to cut the recess out. Just try to keep as straight of a line as you can on the side that the kick plate will reference. All the horizontal supports will be attached to the sides using pocket screws. So I drilled two pocket holes on the end of each piece. I highly recommend using the dust attachment for the K4 or the K5 jig as it captures the chips coming out and almost eliminates cleanup time. To attach the supports, I laid one side down on the floor and began attaching the pieces vertically. After I had the top and lower back support in place, I turned the pieces upright and attached the other side. Because I'll have drawers or pullouts all across the cabinet, I didn't use a solid bottom panel. The lower horizontal supports are screwed into another support piece, turned on edge, which will carry the weight of the cabinet. Now this setup shores up the lower supports and gives a place to attach the center dividers, which will be added later. I worked my way around the cabinet, flipping and moving it and attached all the lower supports as well as the toe kick plate, which is actually a structural piece. With the frame of the cabinet established, I moved on to cutting the pullout trays, which will be on both ends of the cabinet. I set up the stop track on my miter saw stand and cut all the pieces to size for the four pullout trays. Next, I cut the cabinet dividers to size on the table saw from the sheets that I had cut to width earlier. Each divider is attached to the upper and lower horizontal supports with pocket screws and gets pocket holes on all four corners. To position the cabinet dividers, I use the pull-out drawer fronts and the drawer slides as spacers to get the exact placement. I attached the dividers with screws and then I measured for the center drawer widths. Cutting the drawers now versus at the beginning of the project is a good idea because at this point, the width of the drawers is going to be bound by the dividers. With the varying thicknesses of plywood and the possible error in measurements, you could easily have a bad fit if you cut the pieces in advance. With all the pull-out tray and drawer parts cut to size, I took them to the table saw and I cut grooves for the bottom panel. I used a similar method as I do with most of my drawers, first cutting a full kerf eighth of an inch groove a quarter inch up from the bottom, then moving the fence over and making another pass to size the groove to my quarter inch plywood. I raised the blade and then I cut the bottom of the back pieces off so that I can slide the panel in after assembly. You'll see that later. The pullout trays go together really easily. I just squared them up and used glue and brad nails to join them. I assembled them upside down to make sure that all the grooves were aligned and even with that underside of the back piece. Since the drawers will have false drawer fronts, I used pocket holes on the front and back pieces for joinery. A pair of clamps here holding the drawers tight makes assembly a breeze. All the trays and drawers get a quarter inch bottom panel. I cut the panels to size and then I slid them into the grooves I cut earlier. Each panel then gets screwed into the back of the drawer with some panhead screws. It gives you a nice solid drawer that is quick to build. Before installing the drawers, I went back and attached some mounting cleats to the corners of the cabinet back to shore it up from racking and give an attachment point for the wall. Each side of the cabinet will get two pull-out trays, one on the bottom and one near the middle. I shimmed up the bottom slides with quarter inch plywood and gave them an eighth of an inch setback. Then I used pilot holes and screws to secure each slide to the cabinet. 
I used the plywood spacers to support the tray, and then I pulled out the slide arms and secured them to the sides. After attaching a front and center screw, I removed the tray and installed a third screw in the back. To secure the middle slides, I used the Craig drawer slide jig. I marked where I wanted the bottom of the slide and the tray to go, and then I clamped the jig to the side of the cabinet. Now the jig gives a large surface for the slide to rest on while you attach the screws. But the real beauty of the jig here is that when you reverse it, it acts as a support to hold the tray while you attach the slide arms to the sides. I really like the jig for this application. I mounted the slides for the drawers in the middle bay by using similar methods as the trays. Then I did the same thing for the far end of the cabinet to finish off installing the drawers. Since the cabinet's going to be in my garage, I want it to be off the ground and I need adjustable feet so I can level it for the sloped floor. I cut mounting blocks to size and I attached them with glue and brad nails to the front and back supports on the bottom. I drilled a 7 16 of an inch hole in the bottom of the two pieces to accept some hardware. Now I'm just going to use 3 8 of an inch T-nut and carriage bolts here for the levelers. And this is a trick I picked up from Jay Bates, which he used over on his miter saw station. While the cabinet was on its back, I cut the doors and the drawer fronts to size. This makes it really easy to lay out the doors. You can just take some measurements, cut the drawer fronts to exactly the size you need them. I used an eighth of an inch spacer to establish the reveal between each drawer here. I'm using concealed hinges to mount the doors to the cabinet. Now Craig has another jig for this and it might be my favorite one. You line up the jig on the cabinet door and then you attach the drill to the included Forstner bit and drill out the hole for the cup. The coolest part is the depth stop on the bit so you can't drill it too deep and how you can just remove the hole piece and then drill the pilot holes for the hinge screws using that same jig. It gave me perfectly aligned holes for mounting the hinges and honestly it was just kind of fun to use. I attached the hinges to the inside of the cabinet and then I realized something was no bueno. Okay guys, I messed up pretty big here. So I made sure that the drawers would not hit the hinges but I did not make sure that the slides would not hit the hinges. So you see here that this is not going to work. Do not make that mistake. If you're using 110 degree doors, make sure that you shim out the drawers and make your drawers a little bit smaller. To fix this little mess up, I went back and installed a quarter inch shim on the outer sides of the cabinets. In retrospect, I'd recommend using two layers of the quarter inch or half inch shim because my fit was still really tight. And yes, this meant I had to remake all the trays. <laughs> I attached the false drawer fronts to the drawer by drilling quarter inch through holes and using pocket screws from inside. After that, I mounted the pulls to the drawer fronts and doors. I spaced the handles near the top of the drawers for easier access for those lower drawers. I want to replace these handles later on with some shop built ones out of maple, but these are going to look nice for now. The final piece of the cabinet is the top. I made everything to this point out of just two sheets of plywood. I used a portion of a third sheet for my top, but you could make a solid wood one or use an off the shelf countertop as well. To give the top a beefier feel, I trimmed it with an inch and a half thick piece of maple hardwood. I used glue and pocket screws on the underside of the top to attach the trim to the front. I left the front piece long to cut it to size after the side trim is on. I mounted spacer strips on the underside of the top to raise it off the base and give a spot to attach the screws from underneath. I just attached it with glue and inch and a quarter screws. I flipped the top over and cut the front trim flush with the sides using my flush cut saw. Then I took the top out to the driveway, rounded over the edges with my router, and sanded everything to 180 grit. I applied two coats of water-based poly to the cabinet and three coats to the top before taking it back inside. I removed the upper pull-out trays and secured the top to the cabinet with screws from below and I was all finished. And this cabinet's going to be an awesome addition to my mid and long-term storage in the shop. And the possibilities are just really endless with this design and you can size it and number the drawer and door combination to fit your needs. I want to give a big thank you to Craig Tool for helping me out with this project. Their jigs made this project go a lot faster and the pocket hole joinery makes the case go together super quick. There's going to be links down below in the description to all the different items that I use today. You can go check them out. If you want plans to build your own base cabinet, there's a link down below in the description. It'll take you to my plans and they have 3D diagrams, cut lists, as well as step-by-step -step instructions. I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons over there in the Builders Club. Thank you guys for supporting me. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the channel. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.